been asked many times about doing a video showing uh, some of my methods, showing some of my work. And so, um, thankfully, Thomas Bird, whom I love their shoes, uh, was nice enough to send a pair that had a little bit of a defect for me to work on. So, beautiful shoes. I love their hole cuts. But notice the color difference. So this is their olive patina. And, and truthfully, this one, I don't think... Uh, I think this is more what was intended. This shoe, you can see the darker areas here and really along here as well. And just overall, it's a little bit darker than the other shoe. And so uh, we're going to strip both of these and uh, completely refinish them, doing a new patina. So got a cotton ball soaked in acetone is what we're using. And this is the way I do all the shoes. Now I'm not going to video the entire process of stripping, but this at least gives you an idea. So you can see how it pulls the finish off. It's going to be multiple rounds of this, so I'm going to dip the cotton ball, get what it uh, will take off, and then it's going to start to uh, it's going to start to dry up a little bit, and so you get a new one, a little bit more acetone, and you keep going. And yeah, it just takes uh, multiple rounds. Um, this absolutely could ruin a pair of shoes, so you don't want to play around with this if it's your first time. I always recommend for people, you know, get a pair off uh, eBay or, or Goodwill, something like that to experiment with when you're first uh, learning to do this. But that gives you an idea right there of how much color is going to come off. I'll pause the video here, and what I'll do is I'll, I'll show it again after it's been completely stripped. So both pairs now are fairly stripped. You can also see that they are now fairly even. Now a good question at this point would be, when, when are we done? When, uh, when can I stop stripping? And really the, the simple answer is, you go until you no longer get a bunch of color on the cotton ball. So I feel like we are pretty close, but as long as I'm still getting a decent amount of green, coming off on the cotton ball, then we're gonna go a little bit more. So probably not quite done yet, um, but we are very, very close. And so we're probably gonna stop it right there. And All right, so it's time to start adding some color to these things. So what I'm thinking about doing is gonna be a fall or autumn themed patina. So I'm taking a little bit of Fibing's yellow and it's going to be interesting just because of the uh, starting with a, an olive base. So, you know, when we add color, it's going to, going to change things up a little bit. So as we start doing this, you know, we may change my mind. We may do something else. So as I'm adding this yellow, it is going a little more green. Than I was uh, maybe initially thinking about. That's all right. We are going to work with it. We're going to come up with something cool. Yeah, that's actually going to work just fine. So it gives us a little bit of that yellow. We're going to add some browns, some reds. These things are going to be fall ready. So in case you're kind of wondering how, you know, how do I apply it? Literally using a, uh, you can use a paintbrush. This is actually a makeup brush. Um, it was like a dollar at Target. ELF brand. Yeah, here we go. These type of things. Uh, works fantastic. Also, maybe I'll show you this. Uh, after I dip it in the dye, typically, I always work on a piece of cardboard, something like that. I always try to dry the brush a little bit. You don't want it to be too wet. It's going to add too much dye at a time. So you kind of want to go in just slow, uh, thin layers. And kind of similar to adding wax and things like that. You don't want to do too much at once. So you kind of do a little more slow and controlled. This is going to be pretty cool. So here's what we got compared to the other one. Uh, I'm going to pause it here. I'll get the other one done with that yellow base and we'll go from there. 
All right, so we're gonna do a little bit more here. This is some um, Saphir diets. They're Havana, Havana Brown. I'm gonna add a little bit of this onto the toes here. Really, uh, this brush still feels a little bit too wet. Adding the dye a little bit heavier than I like. This is working a little better now. Do the same thing Come up around the eyelets here too. So you can get an idea of what uh, what we're going to be doing here. So we'll be adding more of this uh, brown, kind of darker along here. And we'll keep some areas that's lighter. So we're going to keep playing with that. I'll pause it here and uh, we'll take a look at it again in a little bit. So here we are done with most of the dye work on these. I will say that I added a little bit of red right through here on the tongue. A little bit on the heel there as well. Not too, too visible. Um, yeah, a little bit right along the ho uh, toe there as well. Uh, not too visible. We're going to see what happens. So at this point, um, I always will kind of recondition the leather. So all the dye and the stripping, it's all got alcohol and acetone and all these things that kind of strip the leather. So using a little bit of uh, Saphir Renovateur. And we're going to go over the entire shoe with this. Now this usually is going to remove a little bit of dye. And so we'll see what happens with the color as some of this uh, little bit of dry dye comes off the top and whatever's remaining is going to be what's really has absorbed into the leather. This is going to rehydrate and again remove some of that uh, surface dye that didn't get absorbed. And typically this is going to bring out a little bit more of the color as the, the dye dries on the surface. It kind of makes a little bit of a dull uh, surface to it. So maybe you're able to see a little bit more of the, the red tones in through here. Yeah, lighting is a little bit tough right now. What I'm going to do after I after I rub these down with a little bit of Saphir, I'll just give them a good brushing. This is typically going to create a nice soft shine on the shoe as well. So here, shined compared to the unshined. You can kind of see how dull the surface is on this shoe. So I'm going to do the same thing to the other one, and then we're going to add a little bit of uh, cream to add some more color as well. Okay, so we did a little bit of soft shine on, on both of these just by adding the Saphir Renovateur. 
The next thing I'm looking at doing, I'm going to add a little bit of Saphir Hermes Red Cream Polish. I'm going to do it in a few areas. I'm going to add a little bit on the toe. And this is going to add just a little bit more coloration. Not as much as the actual dye work itself, but it kind of tends to add a little bit more of a, a shading and blending. Do a little bit in here too. Along the eyelets. And it definitely does add just a little bit of uh, red pigment. A little bit more red pigment. And a little bit on the heel as well. Now I will say that I am not really not light, love, uh, loving the lighting right now in this situation here. I mean, I can see the color on the shoes, but to me it is not showing up great on video. So really, you're just going to have to wait until I've got the actual photos with some outside lighting to see all this uh, color variation in these. I feel like uh, on film right now it's just not doing it justice. I'm going to do the same thing on the other shoe with a little bit more Hermes Red. Going to kind of fade in up from the toe, the heel, along the eyelets. And really at that point the next step is going to be just uh, give another brushing and then I'm going to give them the, uh, the mirror shine on the toe and heel. And that's going to be it. We'll be completely done at that point. So I'm going to go ahead and pause it here as I'm adding in some more cream polish. And we'll do the final shine, and uh, that'll be it. All right, so we've added some cream polish. We buffed them. We have a nice soft, uh, soft shine going right now. And so the next step is going to be to get that real high shine on the toe. I'm actually going to use the uh, Pure Polish High Shine. I use the Saphir Mirror Gloss as well. You know, they both work fantastic. And so, really, I kind of use them interchangeably. I use a uh, just an old cotton t-shirt. A little bit of water from a dispenser. Getting a decent amount of polish on the on the cloth here. And then just with some circular motions, can I add some wax to these? And this is just building a base coat, so we go a little bit thicker at first. A nice solid base. I'm going to do the same thing on the heel. We'll go for a, a mirror shine there as well. Also, you yeah, notice this. Um, it will pull off some of the dye and some of the cream polish that is on there as well. So that is normal and expected. It's always going to tend to lighten them up a bit when you're shining. Do the same thing with the other toe. And really at this point it's just going to be, I'm not going to film the whole process because it could take 40 minutes or longer, but it's going to be a repeat. It's going to be a little bit of dye, or not dye, I'm sorry, a little bit of wax, a little bit of water, buffing it on there. And it's going to be a number of rounds until we start to get that mirror finish. What I'll probably do is pause here, and as we're getting closer to the end, as we're getting the mirror shine, I'll uh, pick it back up filming. But, yep, making some progress. These are just about completed. Just want to show you kind of the final step that I'll usually take, and that is just getting a single 
drop of water on the toe and then just buffing the same way you build all the previous wax layers but at the very end I will typically do this with a clean section of cloth and without any additional wax so a fresh area of cloth no wax usually buff it in circular motions for a moment and then at the very end do kind of a high speed buff forward backward motion this last little bit is something that I'd kind of been missing previously hadn't done it and to me that's what really kind of brings the the mirror out at the end I feel like it's got my shines kind of to the next next level you can see that but that's it I you know I hope you guys really enjoyed uh, seeing the behind the scenes uh, videos here and I really look forward to posting up the photos of these I really love this pair I think they turned out great hope you enjoyed it